How we doing everybody? This is That Our Nerd coming at you with a quick video on just some different things that you can do using the Tidyverse, using actual data. So we're gonna use some awesome MBA data and I'll leave a link in the description so you can just go there and, uh, and uh, download it, I guess. But uh, I do wanna say I'm gonna make this one a little bit quicker. That last uh, video I did didn't, uh, didn't crush, okay? It was too, a little too long. So we're, we're gonna make this one really quick and really good and to the point. So what we're gonna do is you can follow that link and it should take you here to the miscellaneous stats. Okay, and we're just gonna download this. Um, there's one thing I'd like to point out though for, for NBA fans, okay? We have average attendance of games for the Minnesota Timberwolves. And you know, I, I saw Minnesota Timberwolves games and there's no way 15,000 were in there, okay? Or this one here, the uh, Atlanta Hawks, 15,000, more like seven. <laughs> no one goes there. Okay, but anyways, once you follow that link, what you're gonna do is, uh, there's the share more button and get table as a CSV, which will then read into R. Don't do this top line, because then you'll have two, uh, two column headers, I guess. Like this will be the first row, and so you don't want that. So just Highlight that, that uh, don't, don't highlight the top row. Um, also, we don't really care about the league average, so we're gonna leave out the uh, bottom one. And now, you can just paste this, copy and paste it in a text uh, editor type thing, but make sure to save it as a CSV, all right? So, save it as a CSV. All right, so we're back. I saved it as a as bball.csv. You can save it as whatever you want. Uh, what we're gonna need is the tidyverse. And again, if there's anything that you should know when you're learning R, it's the tidyverse. Uh, but it does really cool things, makes it really easy, presents it really well, runs really efficiently. So de definitely must have uh, the tidyverse, right? This comes with dplyr, ggplot, um, those different Hadley Wicken packages are, are uh, typically what tend to be in here. Anyhow, so we have the tidyverse loaded. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna read in the data, right? So we'll say B ball. I'm just gonna do ball, so I'm gonna type two Bs. Read CSV. Um, and I just saved it in my working directory. So I can just do B ball dot CSV, right? Uh, when you do it this way with the underscore CSV, it's gonna load it into a tibble, which is a tidyverse thing, which makes it nice. So if we, were, if we were to look at it, normally if you look at the output in R, it's messy and it's all over the place and it's not great. Where this one, the tibble, it shows you know most of them. Some of them don't print, which is better because you don't want it cluttering your, your console anyways. But then it also shows what type of uh, variable that these are, right? So we have a bunch of doubles here. All right, <clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use some, um, some things from dplyr. Right, we're gonna mutate a few things. So the first thing that we're gonna we're gonna get rid of here is these stars. So these are, are kind of annoying when you're trying to deal with this data, right? Some of them have stars, some of them don't. Uh, let's see, yeah, so, see some of these don't don't have stars, and so we we don't want to uh, have those stars in there because it looks bad if you're trying to present it. So for that one, what we can do is a mutate. And then what we'll do in here is we'll say team, whoa, not ream, but team is equal to, and then we're gonna do a g sub, all right? So g sub, and what we're gonna do, what, what this g sub function does is we give it the uh, regular expression that we wanna get rid of, and then what we wanna replace it with, and then the data that we give it, right? So what we wanna replace is the star, okay? And so we're gonna need a couple backslashes because the star is obviously uh, for regular expressions. Um, it means something. So we can't just put a star. Um, we have to escape it with those double backslashes. And then we're gonna replace it with nothing, right? So just do an empty. Um, don't even put a space, just an empty, empty thing there. And then the uh, variable that we're looking at is team. And then we'll just select team so that we can see it and make sure they're gone. All right, easy peasy, the, uh, the stars are gone. All right, so now that that's a little more clean, um, we're not really gonna use it, but it makes it, it makes it nice. 
right? So we're gonna put that in the ball, all right? So again, what this is saying is we're, we're taking our bar, ball uh, variable, or I guess our, our data frame, our tibble, and we're gonna pipe that into a mutate function, right? And we're gonna say team is equal to, and then we're gonna do that, that sub that we have there, right? <clears throat> All right, so one thing that we can do that'll be really nice is um, trying to visualize this. So maybe we wanna get a, a sense of how old the teams are, right? A distribute, an age distribution breakdown, right? And so for that, that screams histogram to me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say ball, and then we're gonna pipe that into a ggplot function. And what we're gonna do, we have to do AES. And I don't, I can never remember what that, I always say it means aesthetic, aesthetics. But I, don't, I don't know, that's probably not right. Uh, but, but we have to put it into an AES and put our X and our Y variable, right? So for X, we're gonna put X is equal to uh, age. And if you've never seen a dplyr before or a ggplot, you don't have to put quotes around your variable that you're using. Just leave it like that, it's very nice. And for Y, it's just gonna be the count, right? How many teams are within that bin width that we're looking at? So we don't actually have to specify that. It'll do it itself. So we'll do a plus sign, right? So when you're doing ggplot or a dplyr, it's pipes. And when you get into ggplot, it's the pluses, right? So we'll do a histogram. And for this, we'll do, well, we'll just leave it like that and see how it looks. Right, so it tells us that they're picking 30 bins and it looks like poop. Right, so it, tell, it tells us to pick a better value for bin width, right? So bin width, um, I think one will probably be too big. Maybe we'll do a half. So say bin width is equal to 0 0.5. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna bin every half year, right? So um, it doesn't go exactly on the half marks. We'll, we'll see when it comes. Mm, error in grid call. You know, we're live here, okay? We're, we're seeing problems. Just copy this, see what's going on. Did I spell it wrong or something? Bin with, yeah, I don't, I don't know what I did wrong before, but, but now it's working, <laughs> right? So every, every half year uh, should be represented here, right? So, we go from like 23.75 to 24.25, and then that, and then that. All right, um, so what we could do to try and further visualize this, right, is we could say, um, let's look at if this is a winning team or a losing team based on, um, based on their age, right? So what we'll have to do for that is if we look, um, in case you don't know, uh, basketball plays uh, 82 games a year, right? So if you win 41 or more, right, then you have a win percentage of 0.5 or more. And so uh, we'll, what we'll do is we'll take this ball, right, and we'll pipe it into a mutate function. Now we're gonna make a, make a new variable called, uh, what, what should we call this? Uh, let's call it win, 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 winning, win, winning record. Okay, and then we'll put that into an if else, all right? So winning record, if their number of wins that they have is more than 41, more, more than or equal to 41, then we'll say they have a winning record, okay? So we'll say if W, right, because this is the number of wins, if W is greater than or equal to 41, then we're gonna say, yes, they have a winning record. Else, meaning if they have below 41, um, then we'll say, no, they don't have a winning, re winning record, right? And so again, just to look at this, uh, let's keep, so we'll do a select, W and winning record. All right, so we'll take a look at this. Uh, let's print all of them. So one thing with, with tibbles is they only print 10 rows, and it's nice if, they're, if they print more, right? So uh, we'll do print, N is equal to 30, so we can look at all of the data. Right, so 41 wins, yes, winning record. 39, no, right? Yes, 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 no, 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 right? Um, so pretty, pretty cool. Now let's get rid of that select statement because we, we wanna keep more, more data than just those two columns. So we'll go back up, All right? We're gonna pipe this in, we have age. And then what we can do is we can say, um, for 
histograms, it's uh, fill, I think. I can never remember. There, there's two different ones. We'll, we'll take a look. All right, so fill is equal to um, winning record. And so what this is going to do is it's going to split it into two different colors based on whether or not they have a winning, winning record. All right. Pretty cool. And they stack it on top of each other. So we can see there's three super young teams here, and they all have losing records. So uh, losing records is not, not the key uh, to winning a lot of games. And then we have older teams, and uh, there's three of them, and they all have winning records. So uh, it's, it definitely benefits you to have uh, more experience. However, their window's closing, right? So pretty soon, they'll probably be too old, and then they'll get really young and draft a bunch of young people and be on there. All right, so uh, again, pretty neat. One more thing I like, is it color? We'll do color is equal to black. And I think that does nothing. <laughs> Just one wickety, wickety, lickety, big. All right, I'm back. So silly me, I put it in the wrong spot. So the fill is good when you're doing the two colors, right? That works nice up here. Uh, but I, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put some black borders around these because it, it's kind of hard to tell. I don't know. It, like this looks like just one big block, but really it's two, two separate age groups that we're looking at there, right? So to do that, you come down and do the same thing, but down in the geom histogram, black. All right, and that'll put some nice black bars, put some definition there, um, make it a little bit prettier to look at. All right, let's put some labels. So x is equal to age, uh, y is going to be equal to number of teams, and then for our title we'll put age distribution, distur, distribution, uh, I can't spell, distribution, looks alright, age, age distribution, and whether or not they have a winning record. That's kind of a crappy title, but it is what it is. So pretty nice. We can zoom it out to make it look better, right? And you can move it around to where stuff fits and still looks all right. All right, so that looks pretty pretty good there. So you can always do a screenshot or some such of that. It's beautiful, really, you know? I like it. Hopefully you do too. And if you do, make sure to press that like button. All right, and uh, and sway the YouTube algorithm to show this more. That's always a good idea. Okay, uh, I'm a fan of that at least. All right, we'll do uh, one more thing here. I'm not sure how long we've gone so far, but we'll we'll try one more thing. Um, so what we're gonna do? What they say is that three point shooting, like that's a new thing. You got to shoot the three ball a lot. Okay, um, and so we're gonna test and see whether or not that's you know, how accurate that is, I guess. And so to do that, what we're gonna do, so if you see this three point AR, um, what that is is three point uh, attempt rate, All right? So if you look at this one, this team, which is the Milwaukee Bucks, they shoot the three pointer on 42% of their possessions, which is quite a bit, right? <laughs> That's a lot of three pointers. That's almost half the time. Um, and they have a lot of wins, so maybe it's working, you know? Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna take a look and see. So what we'll do, we'll do ball. We're gonna pipe that into a ggplot. We'll have an AES here with x is equal to right. So again, I, I can't remember four seconds ago if I said what we we're doing, but we're gonna do a, uh, like a scatter plot for this, right? So on the x-axis, we what we want to be moving is three-point attempt rate, and you might see that it has some tick marks here, right? So if it starts with a number or if it has a bad character, like a percent or something in there, you're gonna to have to use these tick marks. Um, these are not quotes. These are the tick marks, which are typically to the left of the one on your keyboard. Um, but we have to put those in there for it to work. All right, so X is gonna be our three point attempt rate. And then our Y is gonna be equal to, and let's not even see the win loss because that might make it even a little more fuzzy, but let's see if they have a better offensive rating. All right, and so what, again, what offensive rating is, is for every uh, 100 possessions that they have, how many points do they score? 
And so it kind of standardizes it throughout the NBA instead of looking just at points per game because they might have less, pose less possessions. All right, so how does it affect the offensive rating? And then we're going to do a geom point. All right. Looks like there's definitely some correlation there. Um, with sports, it's hard. You want to find anything in the noise, right? It's never going to look like a perfect line or else all the teams would just move up here. But there does tend to be a positive correlation here between how many three-pointers you take and your offensive rating. Now, how does that affect your defensive rating and, and different other um, variables? You never know, but if we're looking just at these one-to-one, -one, um, there, there you go. Um, we can do a regression line and throw that in there to kind of show what's going on. And so for that, we'll do a geom line. Might be a smooth, geom smooth. Oh yeah, geom smooth. All right, and then for this, I mean, it shows what we're going on here, but we'll do uh, method is equal to LM, All right? So we wanna do a linear model for our data. And then the other thing that we want is well, we're going to turn this SE to false, but we'll do that in a second. So, all right, so you might be able to tell what's going on here, all right? But we have a linear regression line, fits pretty decently, you know? Um, but then it also has the confidence bands. So the SE is going to be the confidence bands. Let's turn that off. SE equals false. Ain't nobody want to see that. All right, so we got a regression line. Pretty as can be. Um, we'll put some more, actually, let's add this in there too. So we're gonna go back to our winning record and we will put that again in for the, except for this time we'll do color. So fill is because the histogram, we're, we're, filling the, uh, we're filling the histogram bars, you can think of it. And color is for these points because we're making the points certain colors. So we'll do winning record. And so what this does is uh, not only, I don't know why I go so small every time, stay big. Um, so not only does it color coordinate the points, but it also gives two different regression lines, right? So for uh, teams that don't have a winning record, right, teams that aren't winning very much, they actually have a slightly steeper line. They're pretty much parallel, but you're actually uh, more likely to have a better offensive rating um, if you're taking a lot of threes. Uh, however, it looks like their defensive ratings have to be pretty, pretty booty, right? And then for these ones, you know, there, there, there is um, some correlation with, um, with increased shooting. But anyways, that, that, that shows you two different, two different ways that you can do that. Throw in a couple labels. X is equal to three point attempt rate. Y is equal to offensive rating our title is equal to regression line for offensive rating on three point this is getting a little long so we'll we'll just do that there three three point attempt rate there we go all right so I don't know, this, this I learned back in the day in my basic stat class, but why on X? That's why I put that there. All right, and then the last thing we'll show is a subtitle. So you can actually do a subtitle on these. For that, I'll say uh, for winning for teams separated by winning and losing records. All right, let's, let's, let's show that. Oh my good gravy, it's a work of art. <laughs> so there it is, a quick uh, little dive into uh, the tidyverse. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, make sure to smash, nay, destroy that like button so other people can find this. Um, if you have uh, ideas for future videos that you would be interested in seeing, leave it in the comment. Subscribe for more of the best art content that is available on the planet. It's right here on that Art Nerds channel. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. We'll see ya.